You're the enemy of God as long as there's sin between you and Him. So the Bible says we're separated from God because of our sin. That separation is an eternal separation when you go to the grave and you haven't believed in Jesus. But the Bible says the gift of God's eternal life. God's made it, made it so that it's not necessary for you to be judged for your sin. And the way that He did it was He judged His Son, Jesus. The Bible says not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. When Jesus died on the cross, my friend, there was physical suffering, but the, su but the physical suffering isn't what saved us. Any man could suffer. But what Jesus did on the cross was He became my sin. And it became your sin. And God judged him for the things that you and I have done. And the Bible says that the gift of eternal life is for whosoever. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God judged Jesus for your sin. But he didn't save you just because he judged Jesus. You see, my friend, if you don't receive the gift of God, which is Christ becoming sin for you, and His righteousness being credited to you, then you'll never bow. And if you never bow, my friend, you'll have to bow at judgment when God gives you the penalty for your sin because you weren't willing to accept the payment in the person of Jesus Christ. So if you want to be saved this morning, here's how. The Bible says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Our salvation is a free gift, and it's offered to anybody. You, you can't do righteous works. I know people that say, Pastor, I, I want to get saved, but I'm not going to right now. I need to straighten up my life so I can be a better person. And then I'll ask God to save me because then I'll be the kind of person He'd want to save. My friend, God doesn't save that kind of people. He saves people that are sinners. He doesn't save perfect people. You can't get rid of your sin. That's, that's a lie from the devil. But He'll save you in spite of your sin because Jesus became that sin. And if you just call on the name of the Lord and say, God, I want to be saved because of what Jesus did when He died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose again. God, not only do I want my sins to be dead, to be crucified with Jesus, but God, I want the life that's in Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to save me. The Bible says God will do it. He won't do it because you've changed, because you've become a good person. He'll do it because you bowed. And He said, I want Jesus. And I know people that say, Pastor, I, I, I believe in, that God is God, but I don't like Jesus. I think it's wrong that you have this exclusive Jesus thing. My friend, Jesus is the only one that was able to pay the penalty for your sin. Without Jesus, you cannot come to God. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God loves you. Jesus loves you. And the Holy Spirit loves you. He's the one that convinces you of the truth of the Scripture and loves you to God. If you're here this morning, you've never trusted Christ as your Savior while we sing. I've decided to follow Jesus. That could be the prayer of your heart. God, I want Jesus. I want to be saved because of Jesus. It might be that you're here this morning. You've trusted Christ as your Savior, but you haven't followed God. And you've been like Israel, who has the covenant name of God. And you are God's child. God saved you, but you're living in sin. And the reason for it is that you won't bow. You say, well, I don't like that. I don't like what the, the Bible's old-fashioned. It's out of date and all the rules and the standards and the things that God wants me to do. I don't want that. Friend, you never are free until you bend the knee. You never have freedom. And you'll just be bound by your sin. You say, I don't want to serve God. Well, you'll serve your sin then. But I have to say to you that sin is of the devil. And though you're a sinner and it comes from your flesh, Friend, when you sin, you serve your father, the devil. And if you're a Christian, that's a major contradiction. And you'll never be okay. You'll never have peace. You'll never have contentment. You know, the things that you're worried about, they'll never be fine. They'll never be all right. And you just like Israel being without God for 20 years and never being right with Him when all you have to do is bow. I've decided to follow Jesus. We'll sing it. And as we sing it, as God's spoken to your heart, Right where you're at, do business with Him. Hey, yeah, you can go right to the Holy Throne Room where God is. You can pray standing. You can pray on the knee. I think it's appropriate to bow when we pray to say, God, this represents the fact that I'm bowing my knee to you. Well, if God speaks to your heart during the invitation, if you can't sing, I've decided to follow Jesus. Do business with the Lord until you can sing it. We'll sing it now. I have decided to follow Jesus. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. You have to turn from the world to turn to Jesus. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus. Lord, we thank you that it's true that you are indeed a loving God. You're merciful and you're long-suffering. And you're gracious and you're gentle and you're good. I pray that you would help us to constantly bow before you remembering these things and receiving the results. Putting aside our pride and our self-worship and worshiping you. Lord, I ask that as there are individuals in this room this morning that have determined... It doesn't make any sense at all for them to wait to have your presence, to have a right relationship with you. But you'd help them with these matters. God, as they've submitted and surrendered areas of their lives that have kept them from having a right relationship with you, Lord, I just ask that you would begin to show them specifically how to live and what to do. Make your words sweet to them. Lord, I ask that you would reveal the truth of the Scripture, that your Holy Spirit would privilege them with the more conviction and with uh, more of your love, more of your power, that you'd help us to please you in how we live. God, I pray that you would help us to appreciate the freedom that you've granted us as individuals. Lord, there's not a better day to be alive than today, and there's not a better country than this one. We praise you for it, but thank you for it. Thank you for America. God, I just ask that you would help us to exercise our liberty to serve you. God, we're free to bow. There may become a day when man will say we can't bow to you and we'll bow anyway. Lord, thank you for giving us the liberty to do it. Help us to preach you while we're free to do so. Help us to make good use of our freedom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed. <laughs>